What's up guys, it's Anne here from The Familiar Kitchen and today I am so excited to show you how to make a famous Kerala tea time snack called Banana Bonda. These little snacks are famous all across tea stalls in Kerala and they're made primarily using overripe bananas. So the next time you're thinking about making banana bread or banana pancakes, as great as those sound, maybe you'll want to give these little snacks a go. So keep watching and I'll show you exactly how I make them. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and get set up by laying out all of our ingredients, starting with two ripe bananas. You can actually use baby bananas, which is a little bit more traditional, but I'm just gonna use two very sweet bananas. I'm just gonna peel them and break them up into pieces so that I can start mashing them up into a very loose puree. Once my bananas are all mashed up, I'm just gonna add some water and some jaggery or brown sugar into my sauce pot on about a medium low heat. And I'm just gonna mix this just until it melts and forms a caramel-like consistency. Once this is the right consistency, I'm gonna set this off the heat just so it can cool down before I add it in with the rest of my wet ingredients. Then I'll go ahead and add in my grated coconut with some ghee. I'll mix this up and then I'll set it aside. I'm going to go ahead and add in that cool down melted jaggery and combine it with the rest of my wet ingredients. Then we're going to go ahead and assemble our dry ingredients starting with a cup of all purpose flour. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in some wheat flour. You can add in whatever ratio of wheat to all purpose flour that you want. Even a little bit of suji or rice flour goes a long way too for some extra crunch. Then I'm gonna go ahead and ground some whole spices, starting with green cardamom. I love grinding my whole spices fresh because it just creates a much more beautiful and memorable aroma. So once I peel off those green husks, I'll ground them and then I'll tap them into my bowl with all of my dry ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with some cumin seeds. I'll ground those up nicely and then tap them into my bowl. Give it a smell along the way because that's just what the magic is. Finally, I'll add in some salt and then I'll add in some baking soda. Then nice and easy, we're just gonna go ahead and combine our wet ingredients with our dry ingredients. We're going to give this a good mix, just enough to combine all of the ingredients together. You can add a little bit of water along the way if it's too dry. This just helps your batter to come together, and you want this to be more of a sticky dough. Don't worry if it feels too sticky. Once we let this rest for two hours, it's going to come together and a lot of that moisture will suck in, so it'll feel a lot more dry once we let it rest. Now it's time for the fun part. I'm just gonna take my thermometer and check the temperature of my oil to make sure it's around that 325 to 350 degree mark. This is about a medium heat level. Normally I would use coconut oil, but in this case I'm using vegetable oil, which is totally fine. I'm gonna take a wet spoon and check my dough and make sure it's the right consistency. And then I'll wet my hands and pick up the dough. Wetting my hands just makes this a lot easier to work with since it's still a little bit sticky and then I'll roll this up and drop it into the oil. Each time I roll the ball, I do like to wet my hands because it just makes it form that perfect round shape. The key to cooking bonda is to not rush frying it. You definitely wanna keep this on about a medium heat level and keep it in there for a couple of minutes so that it continues to cook evenly. If your bonda is cooking too quickly, you could have uncooked dough in the center. So make sure you cook these for a few minutes so you get that beautiful dark brown golden color. And that's it. You're ready to have a nice cup of chaya 
and enjoy these banana bonda. Thanks for watching.